Good afternoon. How is everyone today on Friday? It is Friday. Thank the good high heavens it is Friday. You would not believe the week if I told you. You would not believe the month that I am just about to tell you. Um, I'm Kitra Marie. reside in St. Louis, Missouri, although my vision board here says East Tennessee because uh, usually this time of year, I'm out of this state and I'm in that one. But this year I am not. So I am trying to get my visions all up and going and manifesting and dreaming and praying so opportunities come to me so I can leave this area. Lock, stock, barrel, cats, dogs, kid, if he chooses, horse. Um, this area is pretty stagnant at this time in life. And it's just time to kind of move on. But anyway, for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Kitra Marie, reside in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm an artist, a writer, speaker of life, and a business coach. Do some photography, teach a bunch of classes, and working on rebuilding classes. Um, lent my hand, been lending my hand in the restaurant industry, and you know, it's been very hit and miss. Surviving fine, but you know, I'm about ready to come out of survival mode and go into thrive and success mode. In fact, next week, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm on the floor five shifts next week. You know, if there's an earthquake, that's why. Because I'm working five days next week. Big things that are coming up that I was required and requested to be present. And I will, because I like what I do. I like lending a hand where people need help. And after what we've all just gone through, as I've said in many, 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 many other um, videos... People are still trying to recover from the things that occurred, and the restaurant industry has taken a really, really big hit, and October has been one of those ebb and flow kind of months. Um, as I am trying to rebuild business, I'm helping them get more customers and things through the door. I have a terrible, terrible sinus infection. Um, it's been lingering probably since about the beginning of October, and it can all go away now. I'm drinking actually some cherry juice and some lemon water because my throat is extremely sore. Hang on one second. Lots of things I want to talk about today. Um, first, let's give a big, big shout out to Tasha from Divine Guidance. Um, I love listening to her. She's very inspirational. She has a podcast now. If you go over to Amazon Music, look up Tasha Divine Guidance. She talked about trauma, trauma healing, trauma bonding, things I talk about, um, betrayal with shock and the lingering effects from narcissistic abuse. And her podcast pretty much hit it on the nail. So I had been following her a while. Actually, I found her on YouTube. And then she showed up on my TikTok for you page. Um, but anyway, I'm listening to her this morning and I'm like curious about the podcast thing because I did try the podcast thing a few years back and I could never actually get it to work for me. But anyway, I say to God this morning, you know, I think I could be friends with her. I said, I'd really, you know, I'd like to be her friend. And believe it or not, lo and hold, 15 minutes later, who do I get a message from? So... For the day, we've been chatting back and forth. So, you know, Tasha, thank you very much for the chats. I greatly appreciate it. I hope your podcast takes off. Um, like she says, we have to listen to the intuitive messages, and we have to understand the lessons that occur in our life, and we have to know when to walk away, and we have to know that there are things for our greater good. And although my sister might say, because of my vision board, I'm in a cult, I am not in a cult. It's a tool that I use to help people grow, to teach awareness, to teach character behavior. Because if you're trying to figure somebody out and you can't exactly figure out all of those pieces, if you know the person for how they have portrayed themselves, you can actually put a vision board together to understand the nature of who they are and then as you study and you become educated with character behaviors you can start to put in the pieces that are missing um, 
But anyway, my vision board back here, I really, really want to teach that class again. It's, it's just a great motivational tool. I'm getting all comfortable here. Um, I bought some new boots. And I, I don't think I can lift my leg up that high, but I'm going to show you because you would have had to known the other boots that I had for a million years. But look, I bought new boots and I'm so happy. It's the little things in my life that make me happy. Simple, simple things. But I do want to talk about today, other than my vision board and putting my classes together, I'm about this close to starting a painting class again, you know, this close. Come on, angels. Come on, God. Help me. You know, for all that are following, share my nonsense. You know, if you're in the St. Louis, Missouri area and you want to learn more about vision board creating or if you want to learn about personal growth, if you want to take a painting class, it's a cute, cute, cute Whoville painting that I'm going to do. Um, but anyway, I want to talk a little bit today about money. I want to talk about your relationship with money and how you feel about the dollar amount that you have. Um, you know, I can be real transparent. I can tell you right now I'm sitting on about $605 in my, my bank account. Probably have about $12 in my wallet and I might have $50 stashed in my drawer. And that's it. That's what I got right now. Am I worried? No, because money comes and goes. I release it and it comes back to me tenfold. I have a job. I have an income. I have outside sources. And I worry greatly about the people that hang on to their money and they relate their worth, their self-worth to the dollar amount that they have. And I'm going to tell the story about my dad because I like talking about my dad. My dad was a real character. Um, my dad had this relationship with money that he felt that he literally could take it with him when he passed away. And we all know that's not the case. But my dad, when he wanted something for himself, he would go and buy it. But if anybody else needed something, he would give this great lecture on why he felt he could not let go of what he had. Because my dad had this empty life. Although he had his daughters and he, he had a career, he was a truck driver, he had this relationship with money that if he did not have that money, he had no self-worth. A person who has an inferiority complex, a person who is insecure about who they are, they hold on to their money and they, they try to control the growth of their money. And if you know anything about grapevines, a grapevine will not grow unless you clip its leaves unless you clip the beginning buds and although there might be a grape and you might think oh my god it's going to grow into this beautiful bush you need to clip it back because then the next time around it blossoms even more and that's exactly how you should look at money you know you can save it all you want but you got to spend it and you got to let it go and you can't you can't hoard your money because you can't allow your money to control you and though I am sitting here with the amount that I told you, I'm not concerned because I have the amount that will afford to pay my house. I have an amount that will be coming back to me because I am working next week and I am trying to build all my classes. For every dollar I spend, it comes back to me tenfold. And that's how most people need to think about money. The value of your self worth has nothing to do with your job. It has nothing to do with the nine to five that you go to. Your value has nothing to do with the people that you associate with because your value in you as a human being is priceless, absolutely priceless. So those that hold on to their money, who do not want to spend their money, who want to just leave it for their kids, you don't know what ugly is until somebody has to deal with an inheritance. I can say, you know, my sister and I, we got along fine, and my dad had it all set up that, you know, we were going to inherit this, that, and the other. But it was when he was alive, I could never understand why he didn't want to see us do the things that would make us happy. In his last month of dying, it was the worst time ever in my life. And I've been through some horrific times in my life. But 
his money. That's all he was concerned about was his money. And I thought, God almighty, we are struggling here. Why? Why? Mindset is everything. When you were thinking in lack, when you were living your life in lack, when you were hoarding material things, when you were hanging on to that a mighty dollar, you know, it does something to your psyche. It does something to your soul. You know, it's a, it's a obsessive compulsiveness. It's knowing that there are other things that are missing in your life and you're just really, really trying to hold on to something, something that really isn't tangible. You know, you need to hold on to the people that you can love. You need to be able to nurture and almost be a philanthropist, you know. Be, be frugal and be mindful of it, but don't hang on to it because it's really evil and it's, it's unhealthy and it too much affects other things in, in your life. Hold on one second here. But I felt bad for my dad after he passed away because I thought his whole life, that's all he was concerned about was the, the dollar, what he had in his bank, what he had in his mutual funds. You know, and every time he, he got around people, that's all he wanted to talk about. And one of my biggest pet peeves, and although I can teach a class on mindset, on money, one of my very pet peeves is people who hoard money, people who, who it's all they want to talk about is what they've lost or what they have and what they don't want to let go of. And it's a very selfish way to live life. It's not healthy. And it's not a matter of judging people on what they do with their money. It's the mindset they think in lack that creates more lack and more grief in other areas of their life. You know, this week, professionally trying to help a friend, somebody that I did very much care about, you know, worried about how her life is as she's aging, getting older. We all need people, even the kids at, at the work at, at my restaurant we were talking about, and I'm digressing a little bit, but I was talking about having a basement or a lower level that had a whole kitchen in it. And, and the one kid said, well, you got to worry about as you get older, your knees going up and down them steps. And I'm like, thanks, James, for reminding me of that. But it is those things that you do care about. And when you know somebody is struggling and you are seeing them have one bad thing happen after another and being a professional trying to offer advice and trying to tactfully give advice where advice is needed from logic and fact and then to have somebody turn around and lash out at you because they don't want to change what they have or how they do things because they take it as is personal criticism and that's not the case at all but when you know somebody is suffering and you know somebody is missing a key link in their life Somebody who's a professional who wants to offer good, sound advice, you don't turn around and lash out. You don't turn around and be mean and spiteful. Those are narcissistic traits. A narcissist will use something against you because they don't want to be told something is wrong in their own life. And that's sad. There are too many NPDs out there, narcissistic personality disorders that really alter relationships and it can be very detrimental and as a woman who has suffered a long-term relationship with a narcissist you know there are lingering effects in that in that trauma bonding and in that betrayal shock and then when someone who you think is your friend who you are offering sound advice to for them to lash out it's not so much what it triggers but it puts you back to a place when you had to deal with a narcissist before. And I've learned at this point, I'll cut somebody out of my life ASAP because it's a disrespect to my well-being. You know, as a professional, as a person who I really, when I'm a friend with somebody or I'm involved with somebody, I will jump in 190%. But go ahead and disrespect me and let's see how well it works out for the other person.
And I mean that with great respect. You know, nobody should be lashed out at when somebody's trying to help. You just shouldn't do it. You know, those are evil ways. You know, it's mean. It's spiteful. So, like I said, this has been a crazy October month. The weather here, it's been like 37 degrees in the morning, and it's been 70-something in the afternoon, and the sinus infection that I have, it can all go away now. So wherever you are, as we're getting ready to go into November, I don't know if you have daylight savings time, but uh, here we're going to be falling back uh, uh, next weekend, I believe. So wherever you are, I hope you're happy. I hope you're healthy. I hope you are assessing the way that you look at money and how you deal with the dollar amounts that come through your life. You know, your life in itself. You're a priceless human being. You know, your value is based on how you contribute to other people, where your dreams are and where you want to go and where you want to see yourself in that final destination and that end result. Also, real quick, I want to um, kind of give a little heads up here. I was interviewed again this morning um, with Canvas Rebel Magazine. Don't know when the article will post. They reached out to me. It's the sister magazine from Voyage STL, which I was interviewed back in April. If you're interested in that, just Google Kitrin Marie Voyage STL to read that. And then as soon as this new magazine interview is up, I will let you know about that. If you're interested in any of my classes, whether personal growth, using this tool, um, putting a vision board together, using some great journaling tools that I teach you on how you can see why you're stuck in the place that you're stuck and where you want to go and how you can use your imagination to get you there. Speaking in your highest form, all positivity, with great intent and great integrity because you're a wonderful person and a wonderful character that deserves all the best things in this life. So for today, for tomorrow, be happy, be blessed, be thankful for all the wonderful things that do come into your life. Remember, fate does turn on a dime. And only you get to decide what side of that coin you want to be on. So y'all take care. Please leave a comment, leave a message. Email me at kitrinmarie at gmail.com. And I hope to see you real soon. Bye-bye.